All right, let's go, ladies and gentlemen. Friendly reminder, tomorrow you have a vocab quiz on 11 through 20 in a lecture. Wednesday, 21 through 30 and a lecture. And then Thursday, of course, you have a test, 25 questions, all multiple choice. Everyone is clear on the expectations of the week. Hopefully you got your work done because it's a long focus, which is going to make your life hell during the week if you didn't get it done. Okay. Everyone should have their primary source out in front of them. We are going to transition pretty quickly to our notebook. I will tell you, ladies and gentlemen, I do not have any kindness. If I'm up here working on a primary source with you, is it because I'm bad at primaries or you are? Yeah, you don't have the skills. It's not, a, it's not to be rude, but you don't have the skills. So should you be maybe listening or should you be doing your Spanish homework? Yeah, you should. I don't have much kindness to people sitting in my room, especially when I'm teaching a skill and they're doing someone else's homework. Is everyone clear on that? Had that last class. Not pleased. So this is a skill you have to have. We're also talking images today, which we have never done in it. Uh, we've done. No, we didn't, actually. So you need this content more than I need it. I'm not up here for my health. You will not get better unless you are actively thinking with me. Is everyone clear on that? Oh, no. Okay, here we go. Hernan Cortez, conqueror of the Aztecs, from the second letter to Emperor Charles V, 1520. What do we know, Chase? Who's he? We have two male names here, so qualify. Okay, so where's he from then? If he takes over, he's what? What country? <coughs> what language do they speak in Mexico? So what country is he from? He's Spanish. Okay. So, he's the conqueror of the Aztecs. What else do we know, Kira? Well, yes, darling, it's written on the paper. I, I, I got that, but what, is that, what does that mean? No, because we haven't read the piece, so we can't say what it's about. What do we know, guys? Come on, Miss Roth. 1520. So what is happening? What has already happened? What big date should you have already known? This is beyond Miss Roth. Um, yeah, sailed in, sailed the ocean blue in. Yeah, 1492. So this is post 1492. So this is the beginning of what? Of civilizations by Europeans. Okay, because when Christopher just. Columbus discovered it. Did anyone really care for a little bit? No. So this is the starting of that process of Europeans starting to actually be interested. Aztecs, what do we know about them? You saw Aztecs, you should know. Lucy, what do you know about Aztecs? Are they a small one or a huge one? They're a huge impact. Yes, they're a big deal. This city has many public markets and other places for buying and selling. There is one square where daily assembled more than 60,000 souls engaged in buying and selling and were found all kind of merchandise that the world affords as for instance, articles of food, as well as jewels of gold and silver, lead, brass, copper, tin, precious stones, bone shells, snails, and feathers. Is this positive or negative, Emily? Just read positively or negatively? Positive. It's a positive, absolutely. He almost sounds what, Emily? Does he sound like condescending or does he sound impressed? Yeah. There you go. Okay. Um, there are also exposed for sale wrought and unwrought stone, brick burnt and unburnt, timber hewn and unhewn. 
of different sorts. There is a street for game where every variety of birds in the country are sold as fowls, partridges, squirrels, wild ducks, flycatchers, widgeons, turtle doves, pigeons, reed birds, parrots, sparrows, eagles, hawks, owls, and kestrels. They sell likewise the skins of some birds of prey with feathers, head, beak, and claws. There is also sold rabbits, hares, deer, and little dogs which are raised for eating. There's also an herb street where maybe can t obtain all sorts of roots and medicinal herbs at the country forts. There are apothecary shops where prepared medicines, uh, liquids, ointments, and plasters are sold. Barber shops where they wash and shave the head and restaurateurs that furnish food and drink at a certain price. Wood and coal are seen in abundance in braziers of earthenware are for burning coals. Mats of various kinds for beds and others of lighter sorts for seats and for halls and bedrooms. There are all kinds of green vegetables, especially onion, leeks, garlic, watercress, nasturtium, borage, sorrel, artichokes, and golden thistle. There's also numerous descriptions, amongst which are cherries, plums, honey, wax from bees, and from the stalks of maize, which are all as sweet as the sugar cane. Honey is also extracted from the plant, called magui, sure, which is superior to sweet or new wine from the same plant they extract sugar and wine, which they also sell. Different kinds of cotton thread of all colors and skeins are exposed for sale in one quarter of the market. So ladies and gentlemen, is this market organized or chaotic? Organized. How are things organized in this market, Zoe? Yeah, and how do they decide, how do they organize all these categories? By? Streets, yes, hello? There's a whole street with all the birds. There's a whole street with all the herbs, yes? So, does this sound like our cities? No, our cities are a little chaotic, yes? Have you ever been in a neighborhood and all of a sudden there's a bar there and you're like, why is there a bar in the middle of a neighborhood? Yes, okay? Our streets are not that organized. They are. Chaotic. Huh? Well, our streets are chaotic. Yeah, ours are completely and utterly chaotic. Okay, painters' colors, deerskins, dressed and undressed, dyed different colors, variety of vessels, all made of fine clay, and all or most of them glazed and painted, maize or Indian corn in the grain and in the form of bread, preferred in the grain for its flavor to that of the Islands and terra firma, pâtés of birds and fish and great quantities of fish, fresh, salt, cooked, and uncooked, the eggs of hen, geese, and all the other birds. Every kind of merchandise is sold in a particular street or quarter assigned to it exclusively. And thus, the best order is preserved. That is a compliment. Can we agree? Okay, so are they horrified by the Aztecs or are they impressed? They are incredibly impressed. There is a building in the Great Square that is used as an audience house where 10 or 12 persons who are magistrates sit and decide all controversies that arise in the market. What's a magistrate, Cyrus? Like a very important higher official? It is. We typically call them a what? No, that would be a ruler and emperor here. What is a magistrate? Evan? A judge. A judge. A magistrate is a judge. In the British system, magistrates are judges. Okay, and other delinqu uh, all controversies that arise in the, mar in the market in order delinquents to be punished. So, mm -hmm. is this an effective system or ineffective? <laughs> Absolutely. In the same square, there are other persons who break measures that are not true. Break measures, so these are merchants who lie. Okay, so imagine if you went to Publix and you said you wanted a pound of meat, but they actually only sold you three quarters of meat. Would that be upsetting, but you still charged you for a pound? Yes? Now it's against the law. They're not allowed to do that. Okay, you have to sell you, it's like at the gas station. If you pay for 10 gallons of gas, you're supposed to get, there you go. When we talk about break measures, that's what they're referring to, to make sure that the merchants are selling you what you're paying for. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? There you go. Historical context. What is happening in the world, Penelope? 
Have they conquered? In this piece, have they conquered the, Span uh, the Aztecs? Not yet, but they have what? What have they done, Penelope? Yeah, the Spanish have arrived in Central America. Okay, they haven't conquered. Okay. Audience! Who's the audience of the piece, Bella? Who, of who? Of where? Charles V of Spain. What is the purpose of this piece, Nina? Uh, yeah, you're not wrong, Nina, but I think we can add a little pizzazz to that. What do we got, Ms. Ott? What's the purpose of the piece? Okay, it's a report back. What? Yeah, what they have. What they have and what they see. What? Point of view. What is the real motivation for this? What do we got, Ford? No. What's the real justification here? Well, well, them going to a market is not how they conquer them. What are they trying to get from the king? Why are they writing specifically to the king about all the stuff they see, Evan? Okay, they need more money. They need money for what? To justify what? Hello, Kaylin, what do you think? Yes, justify to conquer. Why is he going into such big deal details? Why? What's the point? He goes into all these details for what point, Jade? Um, Jay, sorry, Jay. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. To give the king like a visual of like what? Yeah, kind of so what? So he can like have what? Like an idea of, you know, the, the okay, idea. and so he enthusiastically what? Mm -hmm. Yes, okay, so justify to conquer. It's to persuade the king's approval, ladies and gentlemen. They're listing off all this stuff to say, hey, this is all the stuff we could conquer. This is easy. Look, they're already doing all the work. Yes? Okay, so it's a, not a waste of their time. Why is this source significant? Why do we care, Bo? Sure, but it's kind of a bigger deal. We kind of talked about it at the beginning. Why is this document a big deal? There you go. And why is that a big deal, Bo? They were very difficult? Very developed, yes. Okay, <laughs> that was difficult. That was funny. Okay. Shows that the Aztecs were incredibly developed. Okay. Why? Why do we need this document to do it? Tie it through, Miss Ross. Go. No Aztec written records. That is why this uh, this piece. This is the only source we have about the markets the Aztecs had. Now, what's going to happen to this market once the Spanish take over? They completely dismantle it. Yeah, yeah. All right, here we go. Flip it. All right, here's your first real picture that we are going to go through and look at. So anytime you get a picture, of course, it's going to have a title to tell you what's going on. It is important that you stop and process because if you don't understand what it's saying, you're going to get rocked. Here we go. The 
the Tanapas of Central Valley of Mexico. What do we know, Reese? Oh, like, no, like, floating islands. Floating islands. Okay, they are floating islands. And why do they have floating islands? Why? What do we got? Um, Will. No. Christian? Okay, but why are they building on water? Why are they building floating things? Would you build a floating house, Christian? No, because is it easier or harder to do? Harder. So why are they building in this place? No. Micah? No. Zoe? No. Did anyone read their stuff this weekend? What do you got, Miss Oz? Like no, but it's a good answer, but no. Why do they pick an island to build all of their stuff and have to expand? That sounds like a terrible idea, right? Could you build an island and turn it into a floating city in 2022 with no beast of burden? No. Why, Ella? Because that's, first of all, if they built their city, would they build an island? Because wasn't it that, like, some of this, uh, one other process? Yes, it's a religion. Yes, guys, we do dumb things based on religion, yes? So they decided to build a city in the middle of a lake because of their... Yeah, would you make that hard decision because you wanted to or because the gods told you to do it? There you go, it's based on the gods. The gods told the people that you will, find, you will build your city where you see an eagle eating a snake on top of a cactus. So they walk around all of central Mexico and they're looking for it. They stop at a swamp to get some water and they look on the island and what do they see on the island? An eagle eating a snake on top of a cactus. And they're like, oh shit, we gotta build it there. And that's what they did. And because they started on an island, they had to expand it in order to support the city that's why they're building a floating city. What's on the flag of Mexico today, Evan? Yeah, because the culture of Mexico is based on the Aztecs. Now, that culture has been completely eradicated because of the Spanish, but we'll get to that. Here we go. Okay, when you're looking at the picture, you've got to really process through. Okay, it's a floating island. We also see people here. What are they doing here? If you had to make an educated guess, Maggie, what would you say they're doing? Um, they're what do you think they're doing? Um, In big context there, Maggie. You think they're going to hang out, have a slumber party? No, they're going to like, No, they have bags of stuff. What are they probably doing, Teja? Swarming. No. They're not farming. They're trading. They're traders, ladies and gentlemen. They're traders. What you also see someone back here. Why is this important? This is showing us what? Kira? Um, animals and things like access. Okay. Okay. These are restricted or does everyone have access? How do you get around this city? Yes. It is water access. Okay, moving by boat, does that make trade faster or slower? It's faster. It's faster. <laughs> yeah, faster, it's more effective. Water travel is faster than overland travel, ladies and gentlemen, and it's easier to trade. So it's faster and more effective. Ladies and gentlemen, all throughout Europe, they're going to build canals in order to facilitate faster trade. Remember the Grand Canal? Yeah, they do it to make things slower or faster? Historical context. Here we go. What is the historical context of the piece, Caitlin? Okay, but what's the historical context of the piece? Sort of. You're not right, but you're not wrong. Jay? Yeah, they're in Mexico. Guys, what is, ha like, what is happening in the world at this time? You need to raise your hand. We're not here having a conversation. Hey, Lee. No. 
Who do you think drew this? Evan. Yeah, it's a picture. No. Guys, who drew this? Miss Roth. Yeah. What country? What country, Miss Roth? Yeah, Spanish. Why? Hi, ladies and gentlemen. How often do you go out to your front yard and draw the street you're on? You never do. Why? Because you always see it. Okay. If you're European, is this new technology? I think you've never seen. Okay. So what's the historical context of the piece, Nina? Europeans introduced to democracy. Europeans have arrived from Europeans have arrived. Historical context is what is happening in the world big picture. Europeans have arrived where? Have arrived in the new world. Let's just keep it broad. We are struggling here. Let's keep it broad. Okay, who is the audience of the piece? If we've decided this is a Spanish person, who's the audience of the piece, Ryland? Uh, probably like, like people in Spain. There you go, people in Spain. Do you think these are important people or just like the family members of these people? You think? You think the king of Spain cares about this photo? What do you think, Ryland? He doesn't care about this. Who would care about this? Tejas. No, people aren't moving in a big way at this point. What do you got, Miss Ott? No. King? No, King doesn't give a shot. Kira. Ladies and gentlemen, when you go on vacation and you take a photo, who is really the only group of people who genuinely care about your stupid photos? You and your family and friends. So who is this for? Family and friends. So when they're talking about what they saw, they can actually show, like, here, this is what it looks like to their family and friends. Do you think the king of Spain cares about a waterway? No, he doesn't. Does he care about big pictures of the city and the power and elegance of it? Yeah. Purpose. What is the purpose of the piece, Reichert? Okay, but do people in Europe care about Chinapas? No, it's like giving an example of what's like. There you go. Or to show how impressive the Chinapas are, correct? Because if you look at this, it just looks like it's woods, but everything in this picture is what? Man made, ladies and gentlemen. All of this territory is man made. Is that impressive? Yes. Can you make a floating piece of land that grows things? Hell no. Show how impressive Chinapas are. What is the point of view? What is the real reason that someone sat there and drew this picture for a couple of hours to bring all the way back home to show his family and friends? Why? What is the real motivation, Lucy? No, but I like the attempt. What do you got, Bella? Um, no. Reese? Would it be because, like, it's something they've never seen before, so it's like they're attempting Yes, the point of view. They are genuinely impressed and respect to the Aztecs, okay? They absolutely respect the Aztecs. Now, is this soldier going to be disappointed when the Spanish get the orders to conquer and they literally tear the entire civilization, culture, belief structure, everything completely down to the core? Yes. Evan. Whatever Aztec he might be, I don't know. We don't know. No, they, why would they speak Spanish if they have never met Spanish people? They, they had a language, they just didn't have a writing system. What? They drew this picture because they were impressed not to like... Yeah, how often do you sit down and draw things? I mean, I wouldn't draw if I was impressed. Like, I thought it would be to like try and copy their innovations. 
Well, they're not looking at the how to build them and stuff like that. They're impressed by it. When you're impressed by something, you see a beautiful structure of like the Eiffel Tower. Do you? What do you do? You take a selfie with it, right? I mean, but I wouldn't draw it. Well, cool. They, he would have taken an iPhone pic, but he didn't have an iPhone. Right? All he had was a notepad in order to carry these memories with him. So what does he do? He sits down and draws. Right? I mean, that's just kind of like if you sit there and spend four hours. Would you draw a really ugly person or would you draw a beautiful person? A beautiful person. There you go. Unless it was like a really ugly person that no one would believe that I saw. You know what I mean? Then I would sit there and be like, eh, oh my God, I'm going to show my friends. Like, this is crazy. Right? You sit and you spend the time on things like you generally care about. Right? This is how it shows. Why is it significant? Shows. That. The Spanish. Were impressed. With their technology. Okay. And they are far more advanced. In Spain. However, what don't they have? Guns. They also don't have antibodies to the Spanish diseases. We'll get to that. All right, take out your notebook. Write week three at the top. Let's do it. We are starting in the Americas, so join me. On the top of your notes, right, week three. We are starting in the Americas. Okay, a couple things you need to know off the cuff. First thing, you need to know that Americas, that means North and South, has no beast of burden. Write it down. The Americas has no beast of burden. What is a beast? A burden for it. Animal used for anything. Okay, so what would be an example, Ryland, of a beast of burden? Uh, like an ox. Ox is a great example. Horses, bulls, mules, donkeys. Camels is a good one. Absolutely. Those are all beasts of burden. So, if there are no beasts of burden, who's doing all the work? People. You need to make that note. So the most valuable commodity in the Americas is the people. That's a huge deal and it's going to dictate how cultures are designed. Okay. So if people are the most valuable aspect, what is a huge trade item? Slave. Slavery is a huge trade item. Slaves are a huge trade item. The only way you can get things done is by human hands. In order to facilitate that, you have to have slaves. Except if you're the Incas, but we'll get there. Okay, second thing you have to know about the Americas. They depend entirely on corn. That is their major crop. Now, in Europe, what is the major crop? Wheat. Okay? In Asia, the major crop is rice. In the Americas, it's corn. What's the biggest difference between corn to wheat to rice? What do we got? Lucy. Okay. Well, I mean, it's kind of, isn't it a grain? It is a grain. I think it is a grain. What do you got, Giselle? Yeah, it has like no nutrition all that. So, if it has like no nutrition, it's like eating like Frito chips, which are delicious and so salty, and one of my favorite snack foods. After you eat a bag of Fritos, are you full or do you just hate yourself? You hate yourself because you just ate like 10,000 calories and you got like nothing like out of it. There's no like nutritional benefit, okay? Our bodies cannot break it down, write it down. Human bodies cannot break it down. So we get pretty much no nutritional value, which means we have to do lots and lots of, no, that won't go. We have to do a lot of hunting or we have to eat a ton, a ton, a ton of corn, okay? There's like very little nutritional value in that ear of corn. So to only get nutritional value from corn, you have to eat a, a lot of it. That is very hard to do, okay? 
Ladies and gentlemen, if everything is based on one crop, what's going to fail on the root regular? That one crop is going to fail a lot. And we're going to deal with that. Here we go. Aztec, center it. So those two truths are for every civilization in the Americas, ladies and gentlemen. Every civilization does not have a piece of burden. Every civilization is based on corn. Yes? Okay. Here we go. Aztecs are the first one. They are located in central Mexico. Center it. Central Mexico. Okay. You need to know that they are, the people are called Mexica. Oh my God. What do we call this area today? Mexico. Well, Mexico is the area. Mexican city is the capital. Okay. You need to know <coughs> that they are going to be the first major emperor, empire because of their tributary system. 